Welcome to episode six of One Angry Black Republican Podcast, where morality meets extremism. It's been a long week, people. A lot of things happened this week that really speaks directly to the house divided. America is divided. And the division strikes so deep to our core that we're like Yosemite Sam. You know, that's my analogy or you know, my metaphor to describe how now Yosemite Sam take out his two six guns and he just start firing all over the place and you know, bullets you know, running everywhere, every which way. That that's the American that that's the American people. And the American people we're, we're Yosemite Sam. You know, we make up our ideas and opinions based off of information flowing from every direction and we couple that with our outrage over whatever might be bothering us or whatever we're dealing with individually or personally and that and that seems to be the mo of the modern day american you know those those high values that you know we in our former day you know dealt with or or prescribed to valor honor responsibility integrity those those values seem to be few far and in between in terms of being expressed by our leadership in, in the country the populace so we uh, we find ourselves in a situation where our there's a there's a social mediocrity I've been speaking to uh, this season on one angry black Republican you know this social mediocrity cuts deep into the fabric of American life you know so deep that you know, two issues I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about today uh, that really captures not just this week in the news and this week in our uh, cultural reality, but also echoes again this theme of social mediocrity that has become so pervasive in American society. So. The first thing I'm going to deal with, the uh, first topic I'm going to deal with is the uh, Billboard Award for Woman of the Year going to our, our sister Cardi B, okay? And just a disclaimer at the beginning of this, I have nothing against Cardi B, okay? I, I love Cardi B. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. Uh, now, my, my little sister Candace Owens, okay, has you know used you know Cardi B on a number of occasions uh, in terms of speaking on you know Cardi B and using Cardi B to explore her ideas of you know decency, um, American decency. And I'm not going to. Uh, take it to that level because ultimately you know who, who I mean Cardi B is a product of American society you know this is what is grown you know in the fruit or this is the fruit that is grown from the tree of American life okay you know we I mean I came up in the era of cash rules everything around me cream get the money 
dollar dollar bill, y'all. You know, that's the era I grew up in. All about the Benjamins, but you know, it's like you know, and 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 I'm and I I think Cardi also, you know, I, I know the young sister a little younger than I am, but Cardi also is a is a re- reflection of that cultural dynamic in America, you know, where the almighty dollar rules and the man who makes the the money or makes the makes the bread makes the rules or woman okay in this case so you know like i said i don't have anything against cardi i love cardi b all right i I think she is an extraordinary individual you know who has done some extraordinary things uh you know i was i was impressed you know that you know Brianna Taylor's mother was the you know one who actually gave presented the award you know for woman of the year to Cardi B uh, Billboard woman of the year and you know one of my friends reminded me that you know this is a Billboard award and you know one of the things that Billboard you know Billboard looks for is record sales and you know Cardi has been a chart topper you know for you know quite some time now you know, ever since Bodak Black you know you know you know Cardi is is a staple now in America you know the American reality and you know she's 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 big so you know when when you're that big you, you you're going to be a target in, in many respects by many individuals in the society so it's a no-brainer that you know someone like Candace you know little Candace you know would would attack Cardi you know Candace is very you know reckless when it comes to you know her analysis of black culture you know and the expressions that come out of black culture and on the one hand I can understand where Candace is coming from, okay? You know, I've always purported the idea that I would, you know, help Candace along with her analysis because I just don't think she's done enough research and she's, you know, has enough experience in black culture to really, you know, speak on some of the realities present in our, in the, in the current diaspora, you know, that we, you know, who, who have been born, bred, you know, within black consciousness. Okay, and that's a very specific thing. I'm not going to get into that uh, today because ultimately this podcast isn't today isn't about Candace. You know, she's just a sidebar in this particular conversation or this dialogue, discussion, you know, lecture, whatever you want to call it, rant. I, I'm I'm here to deal with this idea of you know Cardi B as the as the you know, woman of the year. What does that mean? Woman of the year. And, you know, what are the implications of that uh, throughout the culture? You know, a culture that, you know, we have already, you know, we can, we can, we can cite a litany of realities that our culture deals with in, in terms of our, you know, social fabric or the social reality of our culture. You know, black culture, you know, minority culture in America, you know, specifically black people, the black experience, you know, we are dealing with a cultural reality where metaphorically, we we still have a knife halfway in our back. Okay, I'm going to echo that sentiment Malcolm gave us, you know, you, you can't stick a knife in a man's back and pull it out halfway and call it progress. Okay, you gotta take that knife out of his back and you have to, you know, treat the wound, seal the wound and allow that man time to to heal properly. Okay, you know, our, our culture was raped. You know, let's just keep it plain. Our culture was raped by the European and America. Okay, I don't care white Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, you know, wasp culture dominated physically our you know bodies for 
centuries in America. Okay? And in I wanna say maybe maybe 2016, they pulled the knife out a little bit. Or, or 2008 when Barack Obama became president of the United States. It, it created a paradigm shift in the way, you know, we we as black people saw ourselves or or saw our relationship with America. You know, because previous to Barack Obama, okay, we were, you know, still on the wave of, you know, Rodney King and the police brutality, you know, that has swept our culture and, you know, the gang mentality, the, you know, the, the, the thug life, you know, you know, pop, you know, you know, you know, died and, and, and Biggie, you know, died. Those were the two biggest assassinations that our culture had to deal with. Okay, like I remember walking through the tunnel when 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 Biggie was 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 hot. You know, I, I remember that that feeling, that moment, hot, sicker than your average, pop a twist, cabbage off instinct. Niggas don't think shit stink pink hitter. My Detroit player. Ten for my hooligans in Brooklyn. Dead right. If they head right, Biggie that A night. I remember that. And I remember how it felt. I was a young teacher at the time. You know, you know, and you know, I was still in that vibrant thing place where I was like, you know, hitting all the clubs and partying hard and you know, sleeping out my car. You know, after, after you know getting getting wasted in the in the, in the tunnel, I'm, I'm, I'm you know I remember one night I, I fell asleep on you know it was Monday morning when I woke up like six you know maybe six thirty, you know and I got to be to work at eight, okay and I'm in New York, you know and I live in Irvington and I you know work in Newark, you know so I gotta you know you know hit the gas pedal and you know I remember speeding. You know, to, to, to my block and jumping out the car and running inside and taking a shower, throwing my clothes on, get back in the car and riding to work on a Monday morning. And, you know, I, I remember those moments, you know, because that is the culture that raised us. This, you know, mentality where, you know, we just, you know, live like we were rolling the dice with our lives every day. And, and I was a teacher, okay? So it's like, you know, when, when you're in that mindset, you're, you know, that mindset is, is conditioned behavior. That mindset comes out of conditioned behavior where, you know, the, the superstructure in the society that we live in, okay? You know, we already in food, living in food deserts. You know, we have very li- limited access to the, 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 plethora of opportunities that the, the other cult, counterculture, you know, well, from my perspective, the counterculture, you know, white culture, you know, you go into some of these communities, you know, throughout New Jersey, and they're, they're intact communities, blue chip communities where, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a privilege that you can feel, you know, as you move riding through the community, you know, and, you know, some people, you know, people in the morning, up in the morning, jogging up, there, up and down the street, having, you know, you know, a well planned breakfast, lunch, dinner, and, you know, these very, very, you know, structured, organized, responsible lives. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that that's, you know, you know, there aren't, you know, anomalies within those situations, but, you know, the vast majority in many of those intact communities, you know, there's a high moral standard that, you know, is pervasive throughout the community that, you know, anyone who represents a alternative to that reality are going to stand out and, 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 and may not have the kind of, you know, dominance of, of, of perspective or personality to override the quality of the community. OK, but, you know, in our communities, you know, um, up before the sunrise. First to hit the block, little bad motherfucker with a pocket full of rock. Like that is, you know, the reality of the communities that I grew up in. Okay, where you get up in the morning, you know, it's it's you know, 
you know, you know, people all on the corners already, you know, laying laying out, wasted from from being up all night, you know, you know, working the block all night, hustling, you know, drug paraphernalia all over the place, the kids hungry, walking to school, you know what I mean, predators throughout the community taking advantage of the kids, walking throughout the community. You know, this is the reality in, you know, so many urban centers that, you know, that becomes a norm for us. So it's like, you know, when we hear, you know, up before the sunrise, first to hit the block, little bad motherfucker with a pocket full of rocks. You know, it's like, yo, we, 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 <laughs> yo, that, you know, that's, that's our call. We, we bigging that up. You know, you know, Pop was a, was a, a icon in, in, the black community you know we, we lost Biggie come on Biggie was a, a staple in the community and you know so you know if you know I remember Nikki did, Nikki Giovanni did a poem you know when she dealing with the assassinations of Biggie and Pac and one of the things she states in the poem is that you know this was one of the first major assassinations that our generation had to deal with you know when Malcolm and and Dr. King were were assassinated you know let's keep it funky they were they were hated in order to you know get to the level where you know people are ready to take them out take their lives okay they were hated and loved tremendously at the same time but it, it is the it is the death from that sacrifice that made the most uh impact on our consciousness, you know, as a nation, and definitely black people, our consciousness as a people, you know, you know, when, when Dr. King was taken, you know, riots broke broke out all over the country, you know, and you know when when Malcolm was killed, you know, we saw the we saw the elevation of aggression in many organizations like the Panthers, you know, that responded. To those you know assassinations in a in a way where you know they elevated you know the, the civil rights movement dr king's movement turned over or turned around certain aspects of the constitution okay you know th- that struggle changed the constitution okay and, and 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 malcolm you know his sacrifice uh you know almost you know well well led to the attempt at revolution in, in, in American culture. You know, the Panthers were probably one of the most, you know, successful, uh, you know, revolutionary organizations our nation has seen. Okay? Like a successful, you know, guerrilla style revolution connecting with revolutionaries all over the, the world. So, you know, I mean, you know, you know, Huey got the attention of Mao. You know, Huey, Huey had the attention of, you know, revolutionary struggles throughout the African world. I mean, you know, we we talking about two kids from Chicago, from 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 Oakland, you know, who were able to capture the imagination of the world. Okay, so. Our, our culture, you know, was like, you know, went through this roller coaster of, you know, realities that, you know, saw the the meshing of, you know, a a, a message uh, rooted, you know, like 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 Christ said, you know, you're gonna build a house, you know, don't build your house on a foundation of rocks or or, or sand. You know, so the glorification of violence, and I'm talking about the violence that springs from, you know, the uh, consciousness that allows one to poison the community with drugs for the purpose of, you know, creating profit. You know, creating profit. You know, I grew up watching, you know, brothers stuffing coke. And animals, taxidermy. You know, I got a line in the poem that I talk about that reality where, you know, we, you know, were given, you know, drugs and, 
we sold drugs in our communities and we watched our communities become dilapidated, not just physically, but we watched them become dilapidated socially. Okay, so experiencing those realities and, you know, watching the evolution of hip hop and how hip hop held on to those ideas that promote sex, money, murder, okay, and glorifying it in many ways. You know, I remember, you know, Yusef Ali at Rutgers, uh, he was, a, you know, one of my professors, he taught a course called Afro-Musicology, and I remember him talking about how seductive and how titillating, uh, you know, Salt and Pepper were when he, you know, because you know, he one of his first lectures, he talked about salt and pepper. And the way he talked, to her, you know, the way he talked about salt and pepper, I, I mean, I thought this man, you know, I thought this man was about to, you know, get, get hot flashes. The way he talked about how titillating salt and pepper, the way he broke salt and pepper down, you know, push it, get, push it real good. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, it's like, you know, our, our culture, you know, for however. You know, it transpired, okay? Our culture has held on to those ideas of you know, sex selling and, and murder and, and, and the glorification of drugs. And, you know, all of those concepts and realities that, you know, promote a, you know, that debase us in, in so many respects. You know, we have we have held on to those ideas and messages and, you know, the artists that make millions, you know, selling this, you know, you know, the, the, these these toxic ideas, you know, to our children, you know, and, and don't get me wrong. You know, when you become a when you become a, a parent, OK, because like I said, there's always going to be a part of me that loves the reality of hip hop. You know, um, you know, I'm, I'm a hip hop fanatic, and I'm conditioned that way. Okay, and that, you know, wh- whether you want to call that being broken, you know, because there is a, you know, quote from Frederick Douglass that a lot of the bu- black bourgeoisie like to focus on is, you know, like you, you know, you can't fix broken men. You know what I'm saying? Does that mean I'm broken? Because, you know, I would love to, you know, you know. Have dinner one night with Cardi B You know because you know Cardi B is you know In our you know Especially the male Reality you know she is You know she's a very very Seductive woman you know she's like One of the sirens okay you know we got A lot of women in our culture that are the siren You know like you know You know Odysseus had to You know tie himself to the mast Of his ship have himself tied To the mast of his ship in order to resist the song of the sirens. And, you know, when you see a Cardi B on, on broadcast television, okay, anybody just can't get on major network television today. There's, there's you know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, when, when you have the attention of the world, okay, like Cardi does, you got the attention of the world. And she's unapologetic about her capitalist endeavors, okay? And, you know, that's, the product that's a product of a capitalist society so it's it's a no-brainer that you know you know once you get the bag so to speak especially when you came from you know the hard knocks you know you you came out of the out of out of the the mud you know i'm saying when you get to that level man you ain't trying to hear nothing or nobody okay so it's like save that message for the you know bill gates you know, Bill Gates got millions. He might not have had to sell his body, but, you know, to, to get it, you know, but, but Bill Gates, you know, to get and amass that kind of money in, in the culture, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you were or whatever you did, you know, it's like you could wash it away. You could wash it away because money washes it away in this society because so many people value the dollar. Okay? So for you know you know for 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 cardi to amass such wealth you know using the art and the power of you know suggestion and seduction okay really speaks to 
you know, the, the, you know, the, the social debauchery, the, the, or the social mediocrity of what America hails as, as gold in this culture. Okay. You know, we're talking about, you know, uh, you know, a, 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 a reality where, you know, I look at it, I look at, you know, I, I was watching a video the other day, you know, as I was getting prepared for this uh, podcast and I forgot the rapper, but, you know, Cardi is, you know, featured in the, in the song is like at least a model, you know, where she walking down the street. And like I said, you know, going back to what you said, Ali said about the power of seduction and suggestion. You know, oh my God, it's like, yo, she, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like literally watching a stripper on, 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 a, on, 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 in the video, like, like, like the, the, the girl sell it well. And, you know, so be, beings that, you know, she has, you know, unapologetically followed that prescription, so to speak, you know, you know, to map out towards her overall success the question becomes you know when you when you secure a title like woman of the year okay in a, in America you know regardless if it's billboard whatever you know you're 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 saying that the social standards uh, that uh, of anything quote unquote that you're, you're, you're speaking to the reality that the social social standards don't matter. Social standards don't matter. Okay? You know, you know, player, player, hater, turn your head round, turn your head round, lay on the ground, you've been robbed. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it's not COVID. So, please. But anyway, yo, Biggie, Biggie made a whole song about robbery. It made it sound beautiful. Like, it, you know, robbery sounds beautiful in, in, in this song, Player Hater. You know, you, you, got, you got drug dealers, ar- armed felons, you know, who dominate hip hop. Okay, dominate. You know, I mean, you got you got kids who are, you know, juggling whether or not school is ethic. You know, if, if, if the efficacy of going to school is is something that's important to them, or you know, juggling that against robbery. That's where we've come, and and the mo and the people who are the most affected by that are black. And brown people in America. Okay, so when I, you know, watch a, a, a black sister, Spanish, whatever, a minority sister, you know, who has, you know, promoted such a message, I'm thinking it. I'm, I'm thinking of all those young girls out there who, you know, are contemplating whether or not they want to be, you know, you know monogamous with somebody or they just want to be a hoe there's a song out i can't remember the name of the song but where the, where the girl is really talking about whether or not she's just gonna be a slut like real talk you know and and you know these are the messages we we are having to endure today and i, and I remember yusef ali in this class after musicology was like you know you know we went from we went from groups you know like the supremes you know, the four tops, you know, the temptations, you know, to old dirty basket. You know, the, the, the level of decline of, 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 of social morality that has plagued the black community has been also partly responsible for the decay, the social decay and underdevelopment in the black community. We're suffering as a community because so many people that have gone into, you know, those fields have spread such messages that those messages were like viruses running through our community. 
and 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 so many you know when Beyonce said you know I need a soldier where they at where they at you know think of that 13 year old boy if his status ain't hood I ain't checking for him gotta be street if he looking at me and and then she marries a, 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 a drug dealer a former drug dealer you know who amasses millions and and now they're sitting at the top of the American empire Every single one of them children that that aspire to that, in, in in their minds, they probably thinking they gotta go those routes in order to do it, in order to be successful. And that's what I'm thinking to the millions of youth that have fallen to such messages. And I'm not trying to blame, you know, anyone on that reality. What I'm speaking to is the fact that we don't have a countermeasure to that. We don't have effective countermeasures to that. So that children are protected. Okay, you know, Cardi B says, well, I don't let my child listen to none of my music. Your child, how old is your child? Two, three? She isn't in in a position yet to make choices about the music she's going to listen to. You know, and and then I hear, oh, well, Madonna did it. She kept her music and her licentious lifestyle out of the face of her child. Okay, well... Your child, you know, is one thing. You know, you got millions to fly your child all over the world anywhere to, to raise them. But what about all of the millions of youth in America that are going to be derailed socially because of your message, because of your image, because of, you know, your reality? There's, there's, there's never any real consciousness placed on those realities. And, you know, so when a Candace Owens starts to throw shots at, you know, a Cardi B, you know, I can understand where she's coming from, especially if she's in the fight, you know, for, you know, righteousness, her, her brand or her idea of righteousness and how it should be, uh, you know, how it should manifest in our society. What kind of message is Billboard sending to the world when... You know, it chooses such ideas and messages to be its standard bearer. Okay, woman of the year. You know, and yes, you know, you know, when you have, listen, your Cardi B, right, for God's sake. You got millions, okay? You got a, you got a, a, a major platform, okay? You know, the work you did in, you know, helping get the message of our dear sister, Brianna Taylor. And yes, these are the, you know, the, the, the moments that should have all of us in an outrage over the continued racism that American blacks and, 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 and brown people got to suffer through. We're still, you know, watching this trial of you know, this, you know, cop who, you know, murdered George Floyd. There's a lot of work to do, you know, to get that knife out of our back and to get the, the, the wound uh, treated and, and, and the wound healed. There's still a lot of work. There's still a lot of work. But it feels like every two steps we take, we're getting pushed back three steps. We take two steps and we're getting pushed back three steps. And the people pushing us back happen to look like us. In many cases came from the same communities we came from. You know, who should, when they reach that level, have enough understanding to say, you know what? You know, it's like, yo, I take it, I've taken so much advantage of the, the, the people. It's like, you know, think about all of those families that fell to them to them drugs that got sold in our community. All the crack babies and all of the the, the people who, who, who lost their lives because of those successful crimes. Okay? You know that that you know you know folk like Jay-Z boast about in his music. You know, reasonable doubt. You know and yeah, we like to pick on the big, the big fish, cause they big targets. You know, you know, we we not thinking about 
you know, you know, the, the brother down the street, you know, hustling out his building. You know, we, we not we not we not thinking about him. We thinking about Jay Z. You know, because because he got away with it, and we're impressed that he got away with it. And then he, and then he bags the hottest chick in the game. You know, if his status ain't hood. You know, so think about all them little boys out there who, who think in order to get the the, the, the the bad woman, you know, the, the the icon, in order to get that woman, they they gotta they gotta they got they gotta have that hood status. They gotta have that stain. You know, where education is is a is an albatross to that reality. It ain't cool to go to school and think you're gonna get the bad chick. Being a nerd ain't cool. It's, it's looked at as a sign of weakness. And God forbid we, you know, promote any type of weakness amongst our people. Oh my God. Okay. So, you know, woman of the year? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Sad face. Okay. I'm going to leave it at that. Because I want to, you know, delve into this second thing I want to talk about, you know, which kind of like, in, in some cases, you know, kind of ties in, you know, because like I said, you know, when, when we focus on those, uh, you know, those base realities and we and we and we abandon, you know, things like, you know, you know, quality education and quality, you know, critical thinking and these important skills to help us learn to discern, you know, realities better. You know, we have this uh, quote unquote, you know, voter, voter suppression laws that, you know, recently passed in Georgia, you know, that the governor of Georgia signed uh, this past week, you know, that has, you know, a certain, you know, act, you know, part of the black community in an uproar because, you know, of the, you know, potential uh, of, of, of many blacks, you know, not being able to vote because of these stricter voting laws, which is a no-brainer, especially when and into half of the country, you know, you know, considered the, the last election to be fraudulent. Okay, that, that hasn't gone anywhere, that energy. You know, so you got a whole, you got half of the country that believes that the president of the United States isn't legitimate. You know, they didn't believe it so much that they, you know, made a, an attempted a coup d'etat, you know, a coup whatever on the, on the Capitol. And, you know, led to another impeachment of Donald Trump. And here we have it after the acquittal of Donald Trump the second time. You know, we're sitting here, you know, with half of the country, okay, totally in the in the corner of the of the of the school of thought that says the election was stolen. Okay? So it makes sense that that half of the country would be fighting to create stricter voting laws, you know, and, and, and you know, you know, which, which says to me, you know, and this is what the problem I have with the Democratic Democrat thinking. OK, if, if the if the Republican Party, you know, has the balls to use, to, you know, to, to, to use the law to create more uh, oversight when it comes to voting. And that is going to be a problem for you know, black people moving forward because of our disenfranchisement, because the knife is only halfway out of our back, well then, why not start advocating a, a, a more solid reparations bill with some real teeth in it, okay? You know, like making driving a right and not a privilege. Because if you change driving to a right and you give everyone their license back, then... We have the IDs, we have the credentials to be able to match the, 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 the master culture when we go and, and vote. You know, but we'd rather, you know, send, you know, we, we'd rather storm the, the governor's office, you know, and, 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 and yell and scream and get arrested. You know, these cosmetic arrests, that isn't impressing anyone no more. That's probably why, you know, black people look at that and, and turn the other cheek, turn away from it. There are like five people out there yelling, 
you know, let's go to like, geez, and I like that invasion. Like, like, come on. I mean, that's that level of, 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 you know, of, of, of engagement. No, no, let's get to, you know, your, your, your lawmakers, you know, change the law. Change the law. Get rid of, uh, you know, private property. All of these measures that keep black people suppressed. Not having a driver's license. Give them their driver's license back. Fix their credit. This is where reparations should be going. So that people, when they see the reality of their new lives in America, they can function and compete. You got, you got, you got women working at McDonald's with good credit. You know, you got good credit and you working at McDonald's, you can live a pretty, a pretty good life in, in America if that's what it's about for you. And they know this. So they make it difficult, you know, to attain. And then they suppress us in those fat in those ways. Cops constantly pulling us over to the point where we're losing our licenses. All of, all of the juvenile trafficking that gets, you know, so many black men caught up with the law early. The police brutality that makes us more outraged and angry. The food deserts, not being able to take care of our base needs. Poor housing. These are the problems that are keeping us underdeveloping socially, which is enhancing our social mediocrity to the point where everything that happens, we're screaming foul and ready to, you know, you know, ready to uh, 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 throw ourselves on the sword, so to speak. With those lawmakers and those. The black bourgeoisie should be stepping up and helping to change the law for people. That's what we need, like the Republicans did. So, social mediocrity is a, is a very pervasive, pervasive reality that black people have had to endure and deal with in this culture. And moving forward, you know, we have got to start considering our moral compass. We've got to start considering our moral compass. We've got to start considering the children that we are lifting up in this next generation. Okay, it's 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 unthinkable to think or unconscionable to think that, you know, you could promote a message to the world of debauchery and think that it's not going to affect you in the long run. Okay, so with that being said, I'm gonna come to a conclusion, uh, con- a close today, uh, you know, for this week's episode of One Angry Black Republican, where morality meets extremism. Okay, if you love Cardi B and the grind that Cardi B, as, you know, a black woman in America being successful, you know, regardless of her messaging and her reality. Then you gotta love little Candace. You gotta love Candace Owens. Because both of those black women are extremists uh, from do, two different perspectives. You know, Cardi B, extremists on the left, and Candace Owens, extremists on the right. You know, both black women, both rich. You know, if you if you if you could accept Cardi B, you know, for her, you know, base reality and those base messages of sexual exploitation that she is giving to the world and giving to young black girls growing up. Okay, these young black girls are doing fruit challenges where they're sucking on fruit in the club. You know, little little girls, you know, at their birthday parties, you know, lap dancing boys at, you know, 10. You know, that's the culture she's raising. And then you have Candace on the right, you know, raising, you know, black children you know, to, you know, throw bombs at black people culturally, as opposed to throwing those bombs at the system that created the problem. Okay, both extremists, both black women, both highly successful. You're gonna love one, you gotta love the other. Okay, at the end, I love Cardi B and I love Candace, both of them, equally. But at the same time, I think they're both extremists. And I think we have got to start challenging 
extremists a little bit more effective in our culture. Peace out. It's your boy B. My name is Black Republican. So sick. Season.